In chemistry calculations, we're asked to calculate a quantity, and a quantity has to be expressed in the correct unit. Now, these calculations may involve conversions, where the quantity expressed in one unit needs to be converted to the quantity expressed in another unit. Doing these conversions correctly is extremely important. In fact, if you do them incorrectly, that may lead to dramatic consequences. Let me show you a couple of examples where seemingly easy conversion problems led to some dramatic consequences. The first example is the Mars Climate Orbiter. It was launched to investigate the surface properties of Mars. Now, the engineers on the ground, they made a mistake. They used the English units as opposed to the metric units, which led to a misinterpretation of the thruster performance. And this led to the disintegration of the probe in the Martian atmosphere. The total cost involved, $125 million, due to a simple miscalculation. A second example is the so-called Gimli glider. This was an airplane that ran out of fuel. It ran out of fuel because, again, the crew misinterpreted the amount of fuel in the plane. They took pounds as opposed to kilograms in their calculations, and that was the reason for uh, the miscalculation. Also, in the medical practices, miscalculations can lead to dramatical situations. For instance, phenobarbital is a uh, muscle relaxer, an anti-seizure drug, but it has been applied several times at dosages that were too high, leading to medical injury or even death of the patient. These calculations were simple conversion problems that went wrong. And in general, in medical practices, there have been many, many instances in which drugs were given at too high of a dosage, leading to medical injuries or uh, lethal consequences. So doing these calculations correctly is important. And in doing these calculations correctly, we have to look uh, particularly at the units that we're using. So let me go through a couple of examples and show you how you can keep track of your calculation in such a way that you're sure your calculation is on the right track. Uh, the first example involves a very mundane example, which is simply sugar in your coffee. This question asks you to calculate the mass of sugar in 354.1 milliliters of coffee. Given that, 100 milliliters of coffee contains 23.2 grams of sugar. So what we do know in this question is that 100 milliliters of coffee contains 23.2 grams of sugar. Now from this, I can calculate a density. A density means mass per volume. The mass per volume remains constant. The density of sugar in coffee remains constant. So if I know the density, I can calculate the mass of sugar for any volume. I can calculate the mass of sugar for this volume, 354.1 milliliters. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to calculate the density, the density of sugar in the coffee which is 23.2 grams divided by 100 milliliters. That is 0 0.232 grams per milliliter. Now, if you know this density, you can calculate the mass of sugar for any other volume of the coffee because mass equals density times volume. I know my density. So for the new volume, I get the following. 0 0.232 grams per milliliter times my new volume, which is 300 54.1 milliliters. Now note that the milliliter appears both in the numerator as well as in the denominator, which means it will strike out. The answer therefore is in grams, which is the correct unit. That is the unit for mass. So the answer is going to be 82.15 grams or expressed in the correct units, correct number of significant figures, I should say, is 82.2 uh, grams. This answer needs three significant figures. Grams is the right unit. And I was checking my answer along the way by looking at how the other unit is crossing out. So we can use this trick in a variety of calculations where conversions are important. So let's look at another rather mundane example. For instance, calculating the amount of money you would spend if you take your new car out for a drive. Let's say you have a new car and you want to drive for uh, 458 kilometers. And let's say that the fuel efficiency of your car is 32 miles on a gallon. And that on a particular day, the price of gasoline is $4.28 for each gallon. Now, using the, this information, you can calculate how much your trip is going to cost you. But in order to do this, you need to know, make a conversion from kilometers, the unit of kilometers, to the unit of dollars. 
So we need to know relations between these units. So one of these relations is the relation between kilometers and miles. 1.6 kilometers equals one mile. Another relation that I'm going to use is the relation between mile and gallons. The fuel efficiency of the car is 32 miles for each gallon. And then I'd like to know the relation between gallons and dollars. One gallon cost four dollars twenty-eight cents. So you can see that I can, go from the, I can go from the unit of kilometers all the way down sequentially to the unit of dollars. So I'm starting with my uh, uh, quantity expressed in kilometers, 458 kilometers. And I want to translate this number into a number expressed in miles. So the first conversion I make is the conversion from kilometers to miles. I create a unit factor that has miles on top and kilometers at the bottom. I'm using the first line here. In this case, kilometers will strike out and the new number is expressed in miles. The next conversion from miles to gallons. The correct unit factor here has gallons on the top, miles at the bottom, so miles is striking out. And my new number is expressed in gallons. The last conversion I make is from gallons to dollars. I use the last line here of the relations. I create a unit factor that has dollars on top, gallons at the bottom. Gallons will strike out. And my final answer, therefore, is expressed in units of dollars. Your calculator will tell you 38.06 dollars. And expressed in the correct uh, number of significant figures, which is three, the final answer is 38.1 dollar. Our last example is determining the volume of a fish tank. Let's say this is your fish tank. It has a width, a length, and a height, and these dimensions are expressed in feet. Now you have to calculate the amount of water you can put in here in terms of liters. So the conversion here involves the conversion from something expressed in feet into something expressed in liters. How do you do that? Again, you need relations. And the relation I'm going to use is the relation between a foot and inches. One foot equals 12 inches. I also like to use the relation that relates inches to centimeters. This relates a English unit to a metric unit. One inch equals 2.54 centimeters. Next, I like to convert centimeters to decimeters. One centimeter equals 10 to the minus one decimeter. And finally, I like to relate decimeter cubed to a liter. The definition of a liter is one decimeter cubed. So here I have a flow of units from feet to inches, from inches to centimeters, from centimeters to decimeters, and a decimeter cubed to a liter. So let's try to use these relations to calculate the volume expressed in liters. The volume equals length times width times height. So in feet, that will be the following. 4.03 cubic feet. Now, this cubic feet has to be converted into a metric unit. And the step I'm going to take here is the following. Between parentheses, you see the conversion from a foot into centimeters. One foot equals 12 inches. 12 inches multiplied by the unit factor of centimeters on top and inches at the bottom, 2.54 centimeters divided by one inch, gives you a foot expressed in centimeters. But it is cubic feet. That means that this whole number has to be raised to the power three. So when you raise everything between parentheses to the power three, you get the following result. 1.14 times 10 to the five centimeter cubed. I've converted feet cubed into centimeter cubed. The next conversion I like to make is to convert centimeter cubed into decimeter cubed. I'm using the relation between centimeters and decimeters. One centimeter equals 10 to the minus one decimeter. So 10 to the minus one decimeter raised to the power three is converting centimeter cubed into decimeter cubed. 10 to the five times 10 to the minus three equals 10 to the second. So I'm getting 1.14 times 10 to the second decimeter cubed. Finally, I can convert decimeter cubed into liters because one decimeter cubed equals one liter. The final answer therefore is 1.14 times 10 to the second decimeter cubed or liters. 1.14 times 10 to the second liters is the final answer.